I'm here with Imogene Lloyd Webber and Mike Muse, who have been keeping me up to date, or, you know, as we like to call it, Ask Noms with Mags, Imo, and M. Dog. Yes. M. 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 Mizzle. M. Squared. M. Squared. We're working M squared. on that. M Squared, We're baby. We're still working on the <laughs> By the end of this morning, we'll have it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do some run-throughs in a minute. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, like a brainstorming in action. <laughs> this is what's really important. Yeah. But what I do love, when we were just talking about, is that can you imagine waiting right now for that phone call? I mean, for many people, some people have been here before, but others, yeah. this is a life-changing moment. What's Absolutely. Like? And I never believe an actor or actress who say this, also on Tony nomination morning, that they were asleep. Yeah, right. You yeah. 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 That's complete rubbish. They couldn't get anything when they were by their yeah. phone, yeah. streaming <laughs> us probably, waiting with the Oscar nominations. Yeah. No yeah. way were they just so asleep. And I got woken up by my and this is how I look when I yeah. sleep at night. Oh, I always please. sleep in mascara. <laughs> Every phone is being charged right now. Oh, yeah. And in my mind, Lady Gaga went to a party last night just to She's stay still up. up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just in Vegas. This is a normal right. thing to for her, Monday this is night. This game for her. This really yeah. takes her a whole different category. We've always known her as this incredible artistic musician, mm. uh, but now we're actually seeing her in a true artist role. And I think those two pivotal moments when we first saw her come out in, in this meat dress, we always seen her mm. be a theatrical. But there was a moment, if you guys remember, whether it was the VM Mays or Grammys, I can't quite remember where she dressed in this androgynous drag male kind mm. of figure. And so we've always seen her kind of acting out. And so it's cool to see her in an official role, an official film, and doing be rec like, potentially yeah. recognized and being recognized for, for her yeah. work. I think this is something that's always been in her. And mm. I think mornings like this is what makes Oscar nomination so special, is that it really authenticates an individual's work and yeah. their passions and things they were born to do. And it can change people's lives. I mean, look at Mahershala Ali. Um, mm. who's in the running to be a Best Sporting Actor yeah. winner again. Um, and his life totally changed two years ago when he won that Oscar. Yeah. I mean, just think about all the no's you've gotten. You know, yeah, yeah, media yeah. entertainment <laughs> is difficult. It's News so is difficult. Good, yeah. You know what I mean? Doesn't get told no this is so one big often. Yes. This is a yes to your parents who may have had doubt, to your mm. friends, your family who had doubts, or that drama teacher said you'll never make it. And then here you are on Oscar morning getting that call. Guys, I think what if they read special. our names? Could yeah, you imagine? Yeah, that would be cool. I would appreciate <laughs> Live on that. Air, Mike <laughs> okay, so we have potential nominations yeah. coming up in just a few minutes now. So, uh, who do you really want to see? Who do you think it'll just be an absolute tragedy, crime, uh, horrible if they miss this this morning? I need to talk about Glenn Close here. <laughs> Break it Glenn, down for me. Glenn Close has more losses without a win than any other living actor. It's absurd. Oh yeah. I'm talking about Lady yeah. Gaga. No. Yeah, okay, right? I know. That's All a no right, right there. Yeah. Right. Quite frankly, talking about Lady Gaga here, you know, yeah, fine, she did a very good job. She can go and win an Oscar for Shallow for writing Shallow. You're telling me that Lady Gaga is a better actress than Glenn Close. That's insane. Glenn Close should not only get a nomination today, but should win the whole thing for the wife. Exquisite performance. <laughs> well, I'm not saying Lady Gaga is better than yeah. Glenn Close. No, no. I just think that in terms of nomination. Yeah, 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 I am, yeah, I am term, calling you out. Sit yeah. down, Mike. Like no, no, you can call me out, but I didn't say she should win. Right, I was talking about what's affirming. No, let's be okay. clear. I was saying affirming Fine. this morning what this morning means in the right. sense of okay. you're acting right. and now you transition okay. from <laughs> artist to actual thespian. Okay. Right? Okay. And, and that's what I'm saying. So for me, my predictions are all about who should be nominated. Mm -hmm. I think there's another show that then we can discuss who should win <laughs> out of the nominations. I like the shade you just threw shade back. Listen, Emo, sit down. Yeah, okay. But for me, what would be a tragedy that doesn't get nominated is Ryan Coogler. I've been really disappointed mm. this far in award season that he hasn't been really recognized for the directorial role that he did with Black Panther. I think mm -hmm. to take the way that movie is, when you see it constructed from beginning to end, there was this over, there was this hype about Black Panther. I remember sitting in the theater in the films like, okay, is it gonna live up to the expectation? Is it gonna live up to the hype? And every scene exceeded the previous scene. Yeah. And how do you do that? And so I think it would be a tragedy if he doesn't get nominated for Best Director. Um, and also, you know, it's in for a shot to get nominated for Best Picture, which would be the first comic book uh, wow. film to mm -hmm. get nominated for Best Picture. Uh, $1.3 billion mm -hmm. at the box office. <laughs> yeah. Deserves it. Right, I'm guys. curious to see if, if Bill Street Talks gets in the top yeah, yeah. I'm curious We, to see we have that. less than 30 seconds, so okay, in 30 here we seconds go. or less, so you have like five seconds. Um, biggest surprise you're waiting for? Spike Lee has never been nominated for Best Director, <gasps> needs to be. Michael B. Jordan, Best Supporting Actor. Oh, those are both so good! <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, so we have um, crimes without them, we have surprises. Uh, we want to get ready to toss it now because the Academy is about to announce this year's nomination. Let's go! <laughs> Good morning. I'm Tracy Ellis Ross. I'm 
I'm Kamel Nanjiani. And we are so excited to announce this year's Oscar nominees, but I have a confession. I've actually never watched the announcements live before. This is the second time in my life I've gotten oh, up right. early for Oscar nominations. The first time was last year when we watched this broadcast to see if my wife and I were going to get nominated. Although that time, I was in bed. I was wearing this exact same outfit. Oh, though. it's so not wrinkly. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've been, you know, steaming it in the shower. That's a little <laughs> trick for you guys. By the way, we did get nominated. I know. It was very exciting. But so let's not keep anyone else out there waiting. <sighs> Here are the nominees for performance by an actress in a supporting role. Amy Adams in Vice. <laughs> Marina de Tavira in Roma. Regina King in If Beale Street Could Talk. Emma Stone in The Favorite. And Rachel Weiss in The Favorite. It's very early in the morning right now. Very man. early. Yeah. Okay, I haven't had coffee, but jumping jacks have been done. I think I can guess why they picked me to do this one. It's for achievement in costume design. The Ballad of Buster Scruggs. Black Panther. The Favorite. Mary Poppins Returns. And Mary, Mary Queen of Scott. I'm on a solid eight minutes of sleep right now, <laughs> which is perfect for me. Any more is too much. Here are the nominees for Achievement in Sound Mixing. Black Panther. Bohemian Rhapsody. First Man. Roma. And A Star is Born. What did you have for breakfast? Oh, I'll tell you after this. Tell me next time. And now, for the nominees for achievement in sound editing. Black Panther. <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody. First Man. A Quiet Place. And Roma. I had cereal. I like this. We're really moving it along. I wonder if there's some kind of record we could break oh. for best animated short film. Go, go, go. Go, okay. Animal Behavior. <laughs> Bow. Late Afternoon. One Small Step. And Weekends. You know, when my alarm went off this morning, it felt like I'd been punched in the face. <laughs> it was me. I punched you. <laughs> <laughs> and now, here are the nominees for Best Live Action Short Film. Detainment. Fauve. Marguerite. Mother. And Skin. I had four alarms that went off this morning. Really? My first one went off and I screamed at the top of my lungs. <laughs> went off at 1.15 a.m. <laughs> For original score. Black Panther. <laughs> Black Klansman. If Beale Street Could Talk. Isle of Dogs. And Mary Poppins Returns. Do you love dogs? I do love dogs. I love all animals. Me too. Here are the nominees for Achievement in Film Editing. Black Klansman. <laughs> Bohemian Rhapsody. The Favorite. Green Book, and Vice. 
You know, I told them instead of 5.20, why don't they do it at 5.15 a.m.? And they were like, that's way too early. <laughs> How that come you be... got to wake up at 1.15? I woke up at 11.30. <laughs> um, do you mind if I take this one? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, for performance by an actor in a supporting role. Mahershala Ali in Green Book. Adam Driver in Black Klansman. Sam Elliott in A Star is Born. Richard E. Grant in Can You Ever Forgive Me? and Sam Rockwell in Vice. I didn't get up at 1.30, but I fell asleep like, I was only through the cold open of my first dream, <laughs> and here I am. The cold open? Yeah, <laughs> at the table is set, I can't wait to find out what happens You're next. You're so lucky you got to dreams. Yeah. I never made it to a dream. Oh, you didn't? No. Oh my God. Nope. My okay. seven minutes was rough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we still have more nominee announcements. We'll be right back at 5.30 and 30 seconds. Which is not enough time for me to make a wardrobe change. I'm going to take a quick nap, hopefully get through act one. I'm going to do jumping jacks. We'll be right back. Oh, so what do you think? Exciting. It's exciting. exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. I was hearing Roma a lot. Mm -hmm. That is fascinating. So Roma is this film by Netflix, mm -hmm. which has never before scored a Best Picture nomination. It's a foreign language film. Was it going to be in the foreign language category or not? But Roma kept coming up. And also um, Best Actress in Supporting Role, Marina Tatavira. I apologize, Marina, if I've said your name wrong. Um, well, she got surprised. nominated for yeah. Best Actress in Supporting Role which I think just indicates how strong Roma is going to be as a contender. Would you agree there, Mike? It is. Yeah. I really enjoyed Roma, but what's interesting for the other best foreign film is Capernaum. I thought Capernaum was amazing, and I was disappointed that Capernaum hasn't been in the conversation for Best Picture, but I'm excited mm -hmm. for Roma. I'm excited to see if it gets for cinematography. I think it was shot beautifully. Um, in terms of Best Picture, I've always been kind of going back and forth with that and how that looks, but definitely the actors were absolutely fantastic in Roma, and I'm so excited for Ruth Carter. I mean, for Black Panther, for best costume design, this is her year, this is her moment, and I'm really excited to see that. What's also interesting is, we normally don't pay a lot of attention to, is best scoring. Mm -hmm. uh, the three top ones that I really love is Black Panther, uh, Black Klansman, Bill Street, and Mary Poppins. Those are gonna be a very, very competitive category. I think it's gonna be the most competitive category that, we ha that we've ever seen up to this point. Mm. So we have that one big surprise in uh, Best Supporting Actress. Any other surprises that we saw just now that uh, people you weren't anticipating to, to get nominated? I'm thrilled. I think Richard E. Grant did get a nomination for Best Supporting Actor, which is his first one ever. Yeah. So good, good for him. Good for him. I think also, true to your point, is the category for Best Supporting Actor is so competitive. Yeah. They literally were all so good, but this is Mahershala's to lose. <laughs> the one, the way that Mahershala did the nuances, of even how like he grabbed his glasses, his paper, how he unfolded things, he has this nuance like a Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep is very, pays attention to details, and that really comes out strong in his performances, that really changes his performance oh, from good to great. And I yeah. think it is his to lose. Now this film, Green Book, that he's in, um, has had a lot of momentum. It surprised everybody the Golden Globes where it won, um, where, where it won there. No, nobody thought it would pick that one up. I loved it. There's been some controversy around it. I don't know where you sit on it, Mike. I love it. I think Green Book mm -hmm. is a fantastic movie. I think it highlights uh, the virtuoso that is Dr. Don Shirley. We're not really familiar with a lot of black virtuosos, and so to be able to see that highlight in such a way, this incredible dynamic black man who spoke three different languages, mm -hmm. who was a classic pianist, who used his activism his own way through classical music to disrupt the South and to really show what black Americans are and what black Americans could be, I think it was very dynamic. Yeah. A very powerful film. For those um, who haven't seen the film, it's set in the 1960s and mm -hmm. it's all about this incredible musician who works at Carnegie Hall, who goes down south and is played by Marsha mm -hmm. Ali, um, and then uh, he employs an Italian-American driver who is racist, quite frankly, that's how one would describe him, to drive him down mm -hmm. south. Um, and it's a, it's a fascinating journey on every level, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's a story of how they empowered each other. Um, I think they helped each other in many different ways and nuance of it. Um, I think it was even fantastic how um, Dr. Don Shirley, back in that time period when him and, and the character got arrested in the prisons of Mississippi, he was able to call the then Attorney General Bobby Kennedy to get them out of jail at midnight. Like, in my mind, what black Americans at the time had the access to the White House yeah. to make those calls, right? And so I think that speaks to the power of Dr. Don Shirley. 
So Green Book is a contender for a nomination for Best yeah. Picture. Absolutely. We're about to head back to see if they're going to be nominated so quickly. In 30 seconds, uh, Best Picture nom, who are you most looking forward to getting nominated? Um, Star is Born does deserve it. Is Bohemian Rhapsody going to be in the mix? It's, who knows? Black Panther and Melissa McCartney, I'm rooting for oh. you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got actor, actress, best picture. We're going to yeah. send it back out to our friends who are giving out the noms right now. Let's see who makes it. For those just joining us, good morning. It's still very early. <laughs> For those watching, welcome back. And now for the rest of the announcements for best foreign language film. Capernaum, Lebanon. Cold War, Poland. Never Look Away, Germany. Roma, Mexico. And Shoplifters, Japan. How's my posture? Oh, it's flawless. Yes. I should take a picture and try and recreate it. For best documentary short subject. Black Sheep. Endgame. Lifeboat. A Night at the Garden. And period. End of sentence. Nicely done. I insisted it should be at the end of that whole run. <laughs> well done. Well done. For best documentary feature. Free Solo. Hale County This Morning, This Evening. Minding the Gap of Fathers and Sons, and RBG. You think this is good? You should see me at 2 p.m. That's when I'm really hitting my stride. <laughs> Here are the nominees for Achievement in Production Design. Black Panther. The Favorite. First Man, Mary Poppins Returns, and Roma. I had bananas for breakfast. Really? Yeah. No peanut butter? No. Cereal? Nope. Protein of any kind? Nope. Okay. For achievement in cinematography, Cold War, The Favorite. Never Look Away, Roma, and A Star is Born. <laughs> the, here we go. <laughs> For achievement boop, boop, boop. in visual effects. Avengers Infinity War. Christopher Robin. First Man. Ready Player One. And Solo, A Star Wars Story. I'm very impressed I can read all these. I couldn't spell my name right now, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Here are the nominees. Oh, that's oh. yours. Okay, sorry. Here we go. <laughs> Here are the nominees for achievement in makeup and hairstyle. Ah, uh, yes. Better you do this one. Border. Mary, Queen of Scots, and Vice. Bit of trivia on that one, isn't there? Yeah. Only three in that category. Only three in that category. It's a guilt thing. Keep going. Mm, sure, thank you. Here are the nominees for Best Animated Feature Film. Incredibles 2. Isle of Dogs. Mirai. Ralph Breaks the Internet. And Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. 
All those movies are great. Um, for original song. All the stars from Black Panther. I'll fight from RBG. The place where lost things go from Mary Poppins Returns. Shallow from A Star is Born. And when a cowboy trades his spurs for wings from the ballad of Buster Scruggs. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Here are the nominees for Adapted Screenplay. The Ballad of Buster Scrubs, Joel Cohen and Ethan Cohen. Black Klansman, Charlie Wachtel and David Rabinowitz and Kevin Wilmot and Spike Lee. Can You Ever Forgive Me? Nicole Hall of Center and Jeff Witte. If Beale Street Could Talk, Barry Jenkins. And A Star Is Born, Eric Roth and Bradley Cooper and Will Fetters. It's exciting that we get to do this. It's very exciting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's exciting for everybody listening. Okay. Um, almost everyone. Mind, oh, you know what? Can I, can I uh, take this one? Yes, that's fine. Brings back fond memories. Oh, that's right. This is all you. Go. Here are the nominees for original screenplay. The Favorite, Deborah Davis and Tony McNamara. First Reform, Paul Schrader. Green Book, Nick Vallelonga, Brian Curry, Peter Farrelly. Roma, Alfonso Cuaron. And Vice, Adam McKay. Are you gonna sleep after this or are you gonna just have your day? Oh, I'm, I'm probably gonna go work out. Yeah. Wow. I'm lying. And now, for performance by an actor in a leading role. Christian Bale in Vice. Bradley Cooper in A Star is Born. Willem Dafoe at Eternity's Gate. Rami Malek in Bohemian Rhapsody. And Viggo Mortensen in Green Book. Me too, I'm gonna go work out probably for three to four hours, yeah. really, yeah, do pull-ups, push, push downs. Um, here we go. <laughs> for, I don't believe you. <laughs> for performance by an actress in a leading role. Yelitsa, Yelitsa Aparicio in Roma. Glenn Close in The Wife. Olivia Colman in The Favorite. Lady Gaga in A Star is Born. And Melissa McCarthy in Can You Ever Forgive Me? Dreams just coming true out here. <laughs> here are the nominees for achievement in directing. Black Klansman, Spike Lee. Cold War, Pavel Pavlikovsky. The Favorite, Yorgos Lanthimos. Roma, Alfonso Cuaron. And Vice, Adam McKay. I am gonna work out, I don't know why you think I'm lying. Oh my God, here it is, the final one. Oh, you gosh. wanna do the big one together? Yes, let's do this together. Okay, here we go. And finally, here are the films selected as Best Picture nominees. Black Panther, Kevin Feige, producer. Black Klansman, Sean McKittrick, Jason Blum, Raymond Mansfield, Jordan Peele, and Spike Lee, producers. Bohemian Rhapsody, Graham King, producer. The Favorite, Cece Dempsey, Ed Gainey, Lee Magaday, and Yorgos Lanthimos, producers. Green Book, Jim Burke, Charles B. Wessler, Brian Purdy, Peter Fairley, and Nick Vallelonga, producers. 
Roma, Gabriela Rodriguez and Alfonso Cuarón, producers. A star is born. Bill Gerber, Bradley Cooper, and Lynette Howell-Taylor, producers. And the eighth and final nominee, Vice, Dee Dee Gardner, Jeremy Kleiner, Adam McKay, and Kevin Messick, producers. Wow. 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 Congratulations to all the nominees. Congratulations. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And watch the 91st Oscars Sunday night, February 24th on ABC. That was so yeah, fun. Yeah, now we did it. <laughs> oh. OK. Wow, wow, wow. Was right. Let's start Best Picture. Should we start there? We can start with Best Picture, yeah. OK, well, so well, we, we, we did some good predictions there. You guys Both did some really good predictions. Yeah. And yeah. Black Panther And Black made Panther it. And made mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. excited for them. I'm so excited for Kendrick Lamar uh, to win Best, well, be nominated for Best Original Score. He is now a Pulitzer Prize winner yeah. and Oscar nominee in the same year. That is incredible. Well that's all right. That's all right. That is absolutely right. amazing. <laughs> One of the shockers for me actually comes a documentary, Could You Be My Neighbor, did not get nominated. I thought that was oh. going to be that was one of the favorites that You're was right. happening. I've had so many people talk to me about that, saying that it made them cry. Yeah, that Interesting didn't get when there's it. that disconnect. Yeah. yeah, and the shockers, Rachel Morrison didn't get nominated mm. for Best Cinematography, for nomination for mm. Cinematography. I was a little bit shocked by that one. He gasped, know, somebody, actually. There was, I did. There was an audible gasp as we were watching. It did, and I think another little <laughs> gasp is that if Bill Street Could Talk didn't mm. really get mentioned at all. Nothing for yeah, Mary you're Jenkins. Right. Nothing wow. for the screenplays. Nothing for Best Picture. No director. So I'm really disappointed. And that one. Um, so there's a lot of shockers and how things does, that were missed. How does, happen? Like, how does a, a movie that's getting all this buzz leading up to nominations get totally ignored? I, I'm, that one has shocked me. I was yeah. expecting at least for one of the screenplays, maybe category. Uh, definitely, I thought Best Picture would get a nod for Best Picture, but for it to get left out of the major categories and Barry to get left out for Best Directing too, as well. So I thought that was interesting how that it played out. It did get a few nominations, sure. yeah. but none, none of the big categories. None of the big categories. Yeah, yeah, one. So that was that was pretty some of the shockers. I don't know what your thoughts well, were. Some of the shockers. Well done, Spike Lee. First yeah. ever yes, nomination for, Spike for Best Lee, Director, yeah. which is just crazy. He'd never been nominated for Best Director first before. Yeah. So, that wow, quick Glenn Close wow. was right there. Yeah. Very interesting again on the Roma thing. So um, for the best actress category, there have been like four that had been seen as locks. Mm -hmm. uh, Glenn Close, yes. um, Lady Alyssa Gaga. McCarthy, Lady Gaga, and um, Olivia Coleman for the favorite. Mm -hmm. um, but interestingly, uh, the lead actress from, the Ro from Roma went in there as well. So yeah, that, that, yeah. that, that hats off to Roma's day. They had a very good morning. Um, and big surprise for Bradley Cooper, not uh, not nominated for Best Director. Yes, that also got yeah. gas from everyone yeah. here. He was was he considered a lock? Did we think that he was definitely or was he? He was highly yes. favored yeah. to be nominated for Best Director. I actually thought he would be in the conversation into the mm. category, so that was interesting. Uh, we also made history too as well with the movie Capernaum, the first time mm. ever a Lebanese uh, female has been nominated for a film um, wow. with her work in the Capernaum. Nadine is absolutely amazing, and, if and you've you been talking of this film. Yeah, I love Capernaum. Yeah. I've had the chance to interview Nadine, and she's mm. fantastic. And the way that she curated this film and the way that she put this film together and directed it is revolutionary. It was innovative, and it was genius, mm. and it gets right to the, your heart and to the soul of, like, migration and really what it is. And so cheers to you, Nadine. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. So, I mean, Bradley got back, sorry, back to Bradley Cooper. Yeah. He did get three nominations. He, he was nominated for Adapted Screenplay mm -hmm. for Actor um, and also for Star is Born itself. But he was looking at four with the Best Director, which would have equaled him with Orson Welles' Amor and Beatty's record. Yeah. Um, so, although it was a good morning for him, it, was a good it morning, wasn't yeah. as expected. That sort of yeah. had, has raised a few eyebrows. Does Star is Born actually have that momentum that we all thought it would earlier on in the season yeah. to go all the way through? Or, you know, some of these other films are going to come in. And look, I mean, Black Panther, $1.3 billion at the box office. Yeah. It just keeps on going, nominated for an Oscar. Wouldn't it be great to see a film that everybody had actually watched win? Yeah, <laughs> that would be, like, it would be shocker. Shocker. Yeah. shocker. You mean that not that everyone yeah. watched The Shape of Water? Yeah. What are you going to do? There was that whole thing, wasn't there, briefly earlier on this year, where the Academy flirted with doing this most popular picture Best popular yeah. One. Yeah. category and then they thought no they thought better of it it, it would actually be lovely if it mm -hmm. for once I'm reflected glad, it is. I'm glad they didn't put that okay. into the category for most popular film um, I'm glad they didn't do that because you want to really go to the merits of it and really mm -hmm. what the Academy stands for to really give it that gravitas for what mm -hmm. it is I'm really rooting for Black Panther yeah. for Best Film again I can't stress enough how incredible that film was from beginning to end and how it lived up to the hype and then met expectations and exceeded expectations Mike too 
is a big well. Black Panther fan. I noticed also when they were nominated for Best Original Song, I believe. Yeah, Original yeah. Song, yeah, yeah. Um, that he, was also, Kendrick Lamar. he also had a great gasp. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't a shock, it was a <gasps> yay yeah. gasp. Yeah, so and that was I'm exciting. also interested now when we get to the Best Actress category, mm -hmm. if people would begin to give Melissa McCartney a look. McCarthy, her, yes, McCarthy, which is so her interesting. Her performance this is, yeah. was incredible. And to really transition from like, this comedic Back role that we ever see her. Yeah. Yeah. How excited no, no, are yes. you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And she should win. She can't. You, honestly, she can't go through seven Oscar nominations without a win. <gasps> and you know what yes. annoys me about? Because Glenn Close is amazing. Kate Winslet yeah. made such a noise about oh. getting all those Oscar nominations and never winning, and then she finally did. How? She was young. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, Glenn is Glenn, Glenn is young, but you know yeah. she's seventy. I mean, honestly, people. Yeah, yeah, no, so absolutely. But, my but, question, though, because I don't know this. If someone uh, hasn't been winning, is that a reason then that they end up yes. getting the award? So often, it's not often always... you win for the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah. Al okay. Pacino so. is a case in point. I think he won for Scent of a Woman when he wasn't supposed to win. But you always tend to win for something yeah. that he won. Yeah. 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 There's a yeah. Washington one for Training yeah. Day when he should have been oh, considered yeah. for either Hurricane or for Malcolm X. Oh, you're so right. Okay, so we could expect this. But the wife is a very which kind of is in. Is that she's very good at this? No discredit to getting close. We're not hating on you. No, 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 no. Don't worry. This is adding. This is adding. Nuance, right? Is yeah, this conversation yeah, banter? Yeah. Glenn Close, you're amazing. <laughs> Mike Muse does not hate you, Glenn you're Close. You're afraid to get eight mil from I, Glenn I, Close I, I, I now. I love you. <laughs> I'm just saying it's really interesting affirming for a guy I got to see to go from yeah. like meat dress to, to like to that. Oscar nomination. <laughs> meat dress. Oh my but gosh, also, what's yeah. she gonna wear to the Oscars? I, I mean, know. <gasps> but this, Melissa McCartney, I think you're an underdog, and I'm rooting for you. Wow, I, you think here. she has a shot? Um, uh, her performance was really, really fantastic. Yeah. But let me tell you, I think uh, another competitive category is for Best Actor. I mean, it's yeah, you break Rami it down, was break it amazing down. in Bohemian Rhapsody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fantastic. Um, and then, my God, there was one more. William oh, Defoe. Kristen Bale oh, and yeah. Vice. Oh. Wow. Transformation. Like, I wow. thought he yeah. was Dick Cheney. Yeah. Like, I was like, oh, that's Dick Cheney. <laughs> like, I forgot he was Kristen Bale, like, probably within the first 15 minutes. Wow. And I was like, oh, you're Dick Cheney. Yeah. But it Ra was uncanny how Rami Malek has all the momentum, though, around yeah. Bohemian Rhapsody, which to me is a really interesting film. It's done $800 million yeah. worldwide at yeah. the box office. Had a very troubled production period. Uh, Brian Singer's mm -hmm. director got thrown off the film halfway through. Yeah. Um, there's been a lot of criticism around it that um, it's a bit too squeaky clean for mm -hmm. actually, you know, how the, how the period the actually story. was for the real story. Um, yet crowds are loving it. And um, yeah. Rami Malek certainly um, has got the momentum, won that Golden yeah. Globe. Um, so we'll see what happens. What's interesting about Bohemian Rhapsody too, as well, I think a lot of times biopics, mm -hmm. you know, people always like to pull things apart. And, and for me, when I look at biopics is, can you be linear with a story, right? Because you won't be able to cover everything. Mm -hmm. And if you do, it'll be an eight hour film. Yeah. And so I think Bohemian Rhapsody did something really unique in how they kept it very linear, very contained to like this emotional dynamic of, mm. of, of someone coming into their own um, suffering and then owning up to their own identity and what does that look like? And so I thought that was really powerful. But even to uh, what you're mentioning, Poppy, and the whole notion of the director got fired. And so mm. this film, actually went into post-production without having a director. And I think that in of itself is, is absolutely amazing. And it turned out to get nominated. At the, you know, yeah, and then it actually gets out. nominated. And yeah. so I think it's going to be a really exciting Oscars in terms of see like how do all these films shape out? Mm -hmm. uh, what's going to be the social commentary going forward? You know, what does it look like? And we have some very competitive categories mm -hmm. this we, year. We do. I mean, just the there were some stops. So I didn't see Crazy Rich Asians nominated. Oh, oh anywhere. my gosh! I You're right. Didn't even think about that. So, there wasn't, was there much there. buzz about it going into nomination? No, but I you would have thought it would, might pick up something. something. Yeah. It was such an important I, cultural moment. It wasn't was. It? I thought at least for Best Picture. Uh, it would have got picked up for Best Picture. And they could have um, had 10 nominations. They went for eight to see the eight. Academy, but sometimes yeah. they go for 10. Sometimes so they do 10. I think they probably should have done 10 this year yeah. um, because there were so many great quality um, films. And such, Crazy yeah. Yeah. You make such a good point, though, and, and, and I'm curious. We were talking a little bit um, about who votes on these movies, and, and Imogen, you were saying, telling me before mm -hmm. that they're trying to become more diverse yeah. um, with who gets to actually decide what's a Best Picture nominee. So when you mention these cultural moments that get missed, how does that happen? It, that yeah. is quite a big yeah. mix, uh, mix but, isn't it? It is, but I think it's going to be interesting, now that we have the nominations mm -hmm. are shaped out, to what you guys are alluding to, 
now the last two years, particularly this last year, we've seen the most diverse new member inductees into the Academy. Mm -hmm. And so I think what we always seem as formulaic in terms of what will win, now I'm curious to see mm -hmm. with all these new inductees coming into the mix, who will actually win. Could because be a lot more surprises. And particularly, and particularly for Best Picture, um, because normally for each category is industry specific, gets a chance to vote for that. But for Best Picture, everyone Everything gets to vote for mm -hmm. that. And there are, now there's a new diverse membership in that. And so I just don't know if the traditional ones will win. Like, for example, The Favorite. That just seems like a traditional Academy film that will win. Or will a film like Black Panther come in and take that spot? And so but I think it's going to be really interesting to see. What I will say about The Favorite, though, and where it is different, is it had three strong female leads. Mm -hmm. and to the extent yeah. that everyone was going, oh my goodness, where are they going to put them all in the acting categories? Now, actually, all those three uh, actresses were nominated. Yeah. Um, you had um, Emma Stone and Rachel Weisz nominated for Best Supporting. Yeah. Um, and then best leading for Olivia Coleman, who's also going to be the new, who is playing Queen Anne there, and is going to be new, yeah, the new yeah. Queen in the, the Crown. Queen in the Crown, yes. Um, so th that that did very well. But, so that's very much a female-dominated mm -hmm. film. Um, mm -hmm. And I was I was on some level slightly surprised, maybe, to see it get a Best Picture nomination. Um, I did. I loved the movie. The movie was uh, fantastic. Also the Best Director nomination as well. And I'm not sure we really. And I'm not going to pronounce that director's name because I'm always going to get it wrong. And they did get it wrong when they were announcing it. And I'm very sorry. <laughs> you're yeah, him. He um, no, but he 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 got nominated where Bradley Cooper did not um, mm. in the Best Director category. Yeah, but I think the favorite, I think it was actually a really well-made film um, from mm -hmm. beginning to end. I thought the pacing of it was absolutely fantastic and how they did that. I actually wasn't, I would have been surprised if it didn't get nominated for Best Picture. I think that is one of those films that the Academy loves. It just loves. has to be. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it just reeks Academy, right? Mm -hmm. And w mm -hmm. with that, and so I'm just curious to see like how does that shape out? And I think Vice was really, interesting done to as well and how it was constructed. That's what I'm curious to see. I'm so happy to see they got nominated for Best Editing. The way that they edited that movie was so different and how they threw in like the fake Different, ending. The, 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 Should we say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've the, not watched the, the, yeah. Vice yet, watch Vice. And then I was sitting there last night thinking, it didn't end. Why is it ended so quickly? I had a screener of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a fake ending. Halfway through the film. And that just goes to the strength of the editing of it. And it really is a different film in how they craft it, how they piece it together. Yeah. And so I'm curious, will the Academy give that some type of consideration when it comes to that? So you mentioned editing. Some of these more technical uh, nominations that we go through, I think sometimes people, you know, they just want best picture yeah. actor, actors. But uh, what do you think some of the technical ones like editing and sound mixing and, and these types any of those that were particular interest to you or stood out that's such a good point that you raised and I believe that a lot of those categories don't get enough attention that they, they should in particular so when it comes to editing editing to me is the most underrated and most underappreciated uh, uh, role in a film without edit editors control the pacing of the film they control the sequence of the film they control what order that it goes in the editing means so much and sound mixing and sound um, editing it's a really good key component. So sometimes people don't really understand what the difference is of the two. Think of like sound editing as like the composers, those who actually write, mm -hmm. and think of sound mixing as like the composer, the conductor, right, mm -hmm. who's standing in front of the orchestra. And what I found really interesting about sound mixing was that Black Panther was in there, Bohemian Rhapsody, and A Star is Born. I think that really goes to films that had great musical content, right, and really would drive the narrative, in particular between Bohemian Rhapsody and A Star is Born and how they piece all that together. I actually think though Bohemian Rhapsody might actually take that away with the sound mixing. Um, Tough to beat yeah, yeah. Rhapsody. And sound sounds. editing, though, I actually think Black Panther may take that away. Really? So I think we're going to see a split. Okay. Uh, we actually didn't even see Star is Born being nominated for sound editing, which I thought that was interesting, mm -hmm. um, that they didn't get it. So my pick for sound mixing is Bohemian Rhapsody, and then for sound editing is going to be Black Panther. Yeah, but again, the music of the Oscars, I think that's going to be, once we stop talking about the actors, mm -hmm. I think the next de second day, I think we're going to be talking about the music and the scoring. I mean, these scores are fan fantastic in all these films that got nominated for best score. The songs are incredible. And Shadow's so, got to uh, win though. Although we oh, all said that about This Is Me last year. Yeah. And then they lost. Uh, they lost. Shallow, I'm, I'm, I think Kinza Gamar and SZA is going to take it when the star is born. I think they're going to I think they're going to walk is away. Is there too much the thing Oscar. is too much hype going into this because then people think oh uh, star is born is going to win. I don't need to vote for them. No, that's a really great point that you add. That you ask. I, I, I would think say on This Is Me last year with Pazak and Paul, everybody mm. thought that was from The Greatest Showman. Everybody was singing that song last year. Everybody thought it was going to win, um, and in the end, um, the Disney song won. Yeah. 
um, and even um, Bobby Lopez and Christian Anderson Lopez, I spoke to them after about it. They were shocked. Yeah, yeah, when they won, yeah, they didn't they think were. they were going to win. Yeah. Um, but so what's interesting about the, those that. two, a star is, what Star is Born with Shallow um, and then with um, All the Stars with Kendrick, both are very popular radio songs. Yeah. And we listen to both mm. of them a lot. And so I think a lot of people already know these songs. And so I'm curious to see, like, where do we go with that? But an incredible nomination morning. Very interesting. So and also, exciting. just just go back to Roma, which is this Netflix film. Mm -hmm. It got nominated both for Best Picture and Best Foreign Language Film. Mm -hmm. yeah, both that's categories. Interesting. You yeah. often that see really them. is interesting. Mm -hmm. That really is interesting, which is why I was fighting for Caperna uh, to be in the position for Best Film too oh, as yeah. well. I, mean, I can't advocate for that enough. But then let's even talk about like this diversity uh, that is as films that have been nominated in terms of identity. Uh, probably, as you mentioned, lots of strong female leads, lots of strong female-centered mm -hmm. movies. Um, also, too, diversity, a lot of LGBTQAI mm. characters and actors and storylines within this film uh, that have been nominated. So that's also a very interesting dynamic, too, as well, that we're seeing. Oh, here, we've got, we have them printed out now. Printed Come out. on in, join the party. <laughs> yes. Join the party. We don't have to keep <laughs> writing at our, our notes. No, yeah, looking at our yeah, phone. Oh, here we go, yeah. here we go. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. Anything we missed, now that we have the, the real printout in front of us. Well, you know, so I'm curious, going back to um, Best Picture a bit. Oh, let's see. What did we find? So we have, oh, interesting Quiet one. Place, Quiet yeah. Place, Quiet Place, yes. Yeah. Uh, I also, I haven't seen it because I'm a scaredy cat. And no, it looks have, ter terrifying, but yeah. that's, it's unusual for a horror movie to get nominated, right? And also, a horror movie that's silent has got a nomination for best sound. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say, that's a good going point. on. Um, but I wouldn't say, see, it's unusual because I thought we have seen with Get Out. Uh, oh, with their true. nomination yeah. last year too as yeah. well. I think we're seeing more openness to the way mm. horror is done. And horror no longer is just blood and gore, if you will. There is like this unique cultural social construct yeah. uh, that really is, really that, that is horror is coming out. So I'm actually not shocked that actually horror has been. So should I see this movie? You absolutely should. Should I? Yeah. yeah, yeah no, I've no. been so afraid. It's been on my list. Yeah, yeah. But I just, I get scared. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Think about it from a social perspective. Okay, like, that's what's, good. That's good. What's it's the not horror. What's the it's social the, the, yeah, yeah, the, commentary that's being perpetrated? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and also John Krasinski and Emily Blunt are the cutest couple that's in Hollywood. That's true, that's so true. Aren't they? Yeah. I'll watch it they just for them. They are adorable. Yeah. They almost are adorable. adorable. Yeah. Although Emily Blunt got snubbed. I mean, I'm not that surprised Mary Poppins didn't, was, oh, although it earned over $300 million year, dollars at the box office, it yeah. was a little bit of a disappointment on it, some levels. It was, but I'm not shocked. No. Yeah. I'm, I'm not shocked, nor am I upset. <laughs> um, I'm not shy, girl, but upset. It would have been great to, to have seen it. Uh, get People some were maybe things, expecting but, too much from it. But I think but, you know, the reason why is because it seems like a traditional Oscar film yeah. that the Academy would love, uh, you know, the return of Mary Poppins. And so I think that is something that we have to ask ourselves, does these new members are being inducted, you know, have a play and a say within what is happening within mm -hmm. these categories of nominations, and then really in terms of who is actually going to be nominated in, in terms of that. Mm. Now, what I am hoping for for, um, and that I was just looking online for is we want some numbers and I didn't have we haven't <laughs> actually at the moment got how many um, uh, nominations each film has picked up which is yeah, already although we, we noticed, a lot. What we just noticed when we were, they were getting red was that we kept hearing Black Panther. Black Panther. For everything. Roma yeah. and A Roma, Star is Born. I'm the favourite. And I'm yeah. interested on A Star is Oh, Roma, Roma and the favorite, favorite type, type of the most. The most. There you are. Um, but Star is Born, um, interestingly, I mean, obviously there have been three other versions. Mm. I had seven nominations first time around, um, six nominations for the Judy Garland version, oh. four nominations for the Barbara Streisand mm -hmm. version in 1976. So I'm interested to see how many it got this time. So let me ask you guys a question. Roma. I know this is blasphemy, but I'm about to say is Oscar what are you nomination. About to say? Are we I, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I'm so proud of them. Is it overrated? I've watched it and I kept What do you think? I kept looking for the moment. Yeah. I was like, what is the moment that here's, everyone is talking about? Here's my, Cinematography is absolutely yeah. beautiful. The directing in terms of the sequence of it, I thought was fantastic. But in terms of the storyline, mm. I kept waiting to get hooked in and it didn't hook me in. And I and I remember sitting there texting someone, I'm like, hey, I'm like halfway in, where is the moment uh, that I kept looking for? So I'm curious, is it group think that we have in our society where like one person says it's great, mm -hmm. then everyone keeps talking about how great it is, and then okay, so it has to be great. So I'm just curious in terms of what are you guys' thoughts when it comes to that? How much of that though is actually that it is on Netflix and it's the Netflix film? 
Um, yeah. We are all championing Netflix. Netflix. I think on some well. levels, mm. it, you know, it is the first next one that has done this that has got onto that level, um, and therefore is accessible to all in a way yeah. that a lot of these art house films are not. Yeah. Um, so I, perhaps it has. A little it bit could of be. But I, kept, I kept waiting for the moment. I, 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 kept, I kept waiting for. For me, Roma is like is last year's doctor. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well I do it. agree. I think that sometimes uh, it's that group think, right? Yeah. Where we all get excited, yeah. and there's often too much hype. And you go to watch some of these Oscar noms, and I'm you sit down, you get your popcorn ready, yeah. And then you're like, all right, when am I, when when. It, where when's is gonna, the moment? When's it gonna, when's it gonna be? And it, and it never happened for yeah. me. And I think it's a great film. I think Netflix did a fantastic job. Again, the cinematography. Wow, I mean, it was the most. It was so beautifully shot, mm -hmm. um, but I still can't really think about like what was the moment. All right, so we have a lot. We have a lot of work coming up for us. We have to work. go rewatch all these movies. Yes, we have to figure out if it's real momentum or if it's just hype. Yeah, yeah. and we have to eat a lot of popcorn. We do. All right, and Amo, check out Vice. M Dog, come over to my place. We'll watch some movies. Happy to it's do it. Be excited. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I want to thank everyone for hanging with us today. I learned so much about Oscar nominations. Yeah, I'm also going to be really busy now because I have to go watch like half of these movies that I haven't yet. Yeah, yeah, that's you're going to be busy. The Oscars, yeah, that's, for, yeah. that's why they do them, yes. so we end up becoming more interested in the film. So you can go <laughs> see it. All right, thanks so much, guys. We'll see you around. Take care, everybody. <laughs>